What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given here with your afternoon snap and today we've got a brand new featured location in the game, Orcus Forge. And this presents an interesting opportunity whenever I can, whenever the featured location allows it, I like to play Cerebro and try to make some silly stuff work. So with the additional Sentinels from Orcus Forge today, I'm trying out three bro. I'm gonna play a bunch of cards that all have three power and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of different ways to build this deck. I'll talk more about that after this first game. This is the build that I went with. I don't know if it's the correct one, but you can't go wrong if you're playing three bro and you're having some fun. We have a lot of opportunity to fit in a bunch of different tech cards. We've got Valkyrie and we have Shang-Chi to kind of flip lanes in our favor. And then we can just fill all of our lanes with Sentinels because we're gonna have Sentinel ourselves, and then Orcus Forge can also provide a bunch of Sentinels for us. So thought this was a fun one. We are up against another Quinjet list, though this time a Thanos deck. And it does look to be the on going version of Thanos, which is slightly less powerful, slightly less all over the place, so we'll give my opponent a pass. And you'll also have to give me a bit of a pass on this one, as I am going to Rhino, the Orcus Forge. I feel bad about it, I don't think you should be able to do this, but I don't want to turn off Grand Central because we've got a bunch of five cost cards in our hand and I can't play the Rhino in Crimson Cosmos. It is important to play a bunch of effects in and, and looks like I could have played it into the Grand Central anyways as my opponent plays a Cosmo. Uh, it is important to play a bunch of location changing effects when you play a Cerebro deck and that is the coolest part about Cerebro 3. You get to play Rhino, you get to play Magic, both of which have three power and you could even play Scarlet Witch, though I think that might be a little bit of overkill. We don't need to change all three locations. You can potentially do some cool tricks where you change a location to Limbo and then change it to not Limbo after the fact and get your opponent in uh, a surprise fashion in that capacity. But in this one, we are just rhinoing out Rhino, rolling out the Rhino as a three powered, three cost card on turn four. And then turn five, I'm going to play Magic into the Crimson Cosmos, and my opponent is going to fill the other two locations, though one of those locations is getting filled in, uh, is a Lockjaw location. So they might be able to move out of there yet if they are able to find the Space Stone. Let's see if they do. They do not. So they are going to be locked into that Ruined location for the next two turns, and we can easily flip that location with Valkyrie, which is one of the really cool parts of the deck, as long as we don't drag it in there. And we don't. We throw a Sentinel into the Grand Central. Would have loved to throw Iron Man in there, but we can just put the Iron Man in there now on this turn. And then for the final turn of the game, we'll be able to play Valkyrie as well as another Sentinel to close it out. And you can see we've got Sentinel in our... We've got two Sentinels in our hand, one of which has the Infinity Border. That's the one I actually put in the deck. I've been getting through this game just using the Sentinels from the Orcus Forge, though I grabbed one there early on, and that's been given me a bunch of Sentinels after the fact. So pretty sweet, I think, being able to make use of the featured location this way. And the deck can actually be pretty strong. It's got a lot of interesting tools and can add a surprising amount of power to the board. And we'll see that here. Iron Man gets to add a lot of power to the board without actually having a lot of power himself. So it doesn't mess with your Cerebro. And then speaking of messing with power, we also have Valkyrie, which can pump up Cerebro while at the same time making a fool out of Thanos and stealing the win. So here's the deck list. Again, it's not necessarily an endorsement, but it is a list that you can play and have fun with. I will note that I don't own Bast, but that could definitely make its way into the list as well. And then from there, I'm just playing a bunch of tech cards. Like I said, Shang-Chi. We also have Killmonger. And one classic combo is Magic on turn five, which then on turn seven allows you to play Shang-Chi and Killmonger together, which is just a lot of destruction on your opponent's side of the board. Really good against the Shuri decks and the Thanos decks that are both running around everywhere right now. I already explained Rhino and Magic. It's really important to be able to turn off locations that either give you additional power on your cards 
or take power away. So you want a bunch of cards that can change locations. Cosmo is pretty straightforward. Valkyrie also does a ton of work in the deck and definitely justifies that five cost. We're gonna look at another Valkyrie game up next. I'm also playing Quinjet in the deck, which you'll notice only interacts with Sentinel. That's a little bit of silliness to go along with the featured location. I'm not sure if it's right, but I've been having fun with it so far. Grabbing one cost Sentinels is really, really powerful like you just saw in the previous game. And then I'm also playing Nova. It doesn't really hurt to run it. And I felt like I still wanted some other cheap cards that can add power to my board in interesting ways. Killmonger Nova kind of functions like this deck's blue marvel that a two bro list will play because as long as you play killmonger as your absolute last card of the game then you will pump everything uniformly which then means that everything is still receiving the cerebro bonus and then of course iron man is very good and mystique can copy either the cerebro or the iron man so a little bit of flexibility there two really, really powerful ongoing abilities that you have at your disposal. There's a lot of other good three power cards. Feel free to take a look through your collection. Like I said, there's a bunch of, there's like a whole discard package. You can play Swarm, you can play Blade, you can play Moon Knight. And then if you even want to get a little bit silly, you could play Ghost Rider and just reanimate like whatever random thing you happen to discard if you don't manage to discard Swarm. And discard also doesn't hurt you that much when you have Sentinel and when you have Orcus Forge, which you can use to kind of fill your hand up and just give you a lot of ways to swarm the board. So there's a lot of fun ways to play this deck, and I'll talk more about that in the next game. But for this one, I wanted to look at just how flexible this deck can be and uh, one of the other lines of play that might come up sometime. So we've got Nova Quinjet and Cerebro that I'm using to flood Mojo World, since that location is just about who has more cards there and then I go for the magic into Hala. My opponent has Daredevil Sight and what they do with it is actually juggernaut my magic over onto my Cosmo location. So no limbo for us. We're just going to be looking at a six turn game and Valkyrie now costs six as my opponent hits it with the Iceman. And even though this isn't the best situation to be in, I think that my opponent is still somewhat likely to totally avoid the Orcus Forge if they can't beat us for 10 in that location. And then we can use Valkyrie just to flip over Mojo World. We've played a bunch of cards so far that don't have three power, but we'll get to put them all up to three power at the end of the turn. My opponent misses with their Cosmo, so that way they can play a pumped up Medusa into that center location. But this opens up the door for my Valkyrie plus Cerebro to steal the win. And to round out this video, we're gonna take a look at some other three power cards that you can play in this list with help from my opponent to demonstrate because they are also running Cerebro 3, but a totally different list, which is a lot of fun. That's part of the fun of Cerebro 3, that there's just so many different cards that you can fit in this deck. And my opponent is starting off with zero into Domino. Uh, we can see them playing a few cheaper cards, though they're gonna get a little bit punished for this because Superflow is the location that they played Domino into. So now we have an extra energy for the rest of the game and we'll be able to use that to play some of the more expensive cards in our deck. Though not all of our cards are super great in the mirror, Shang-Chi and Valkyrie don't seem like they'll really have that much use for us, but cards like Iron Man can still be really good in terms of allowing us to flip different locations. Uh, Killmonger plus Nova, that's kind of in here for the mirror. And even just Killmonger itself, as we get to draw that here, because my opponent's deck actually plays one cost cards that they care about, uh, as opposed to us that just plays Nova and Quinjet. So being able to destroy some of my opponent's cards with Killmonger 
could definitely surprise them. And I'm setting up in the center location with Iron Man to try to win the Baxter building, which will then spread some additional power to those other locations as well. So I have some ideas for how to play this mirror matchup. My opponent plays a blade and then reveals their Cerebro. I'll hit them with a thumbs up here, but I'm also gonna snap because I do feel like with the Killmonger, we are in a pretty good position. We're also set up well in the Baxter building with the Iron Man plus Valkyrie combo. So I think we just got a lot of tools to win this game. And we also now get to Mystique our Iron Man. I talked about that a little bit ago as just a really other cool play that you can do with Mystique. So Mystique plus Killmonger on turn five does seem like it should flip the game in my favor but my opponent has the answer, Professor X, to protect both of the one drops. One of the cool things about Cerebro 3 is you can play a lot of protection. You can play both Professor X and armor, and you can also play a lot of lane disruption. We saw Juggernaut in the last game. This one has Professor X, and then you can also play Spider-Man in the list, as well as Absorbing Man. And Absorbing Man can double up on your Spider-Man, or it can double up on those discard effects that I brought up in that uh, previous segment. So a lot of just different options, but I think we still have the tools to take it, but it's a close one. I'm gonna go for it because why not? Either way, a Cerebro player wins, so let's play it out. And my opponent actually could have a pretty cool play here if they ruined the Baxter building. We would then lose six power into the Orcus Forge, but if they're not able to ruin it, of course, Valkyrie plus Iron Man is going to ensure that we win the Baxter building and then win the game because of it. And seeing that, my opponent is actually just going to decide to throw in the towel here rather than play it out. But still thought this was cool to look at some additional cards that could potentially get played in a Cerebro 3 deck list here. I'll just scroll ahead to the victory screen. There you go. For today, that is going to be it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.